Okay, let's get this show on the road. So, PCGs, I love PCGs. I use them for a lot of stuff, mostly detailing, especially if I'm doing large world stuff. Now, over here, I've got my super large, gigantic sandstone cliff. Okay, very big. Um, if you want to see how big it is, let's go play from here and walk up to it. You can see it is enormous. Okay, really, really big. Now, when I get close up to it, I lose a lot of detail because it's a large model and I didn't want to have super high, um, you know, super high res textures on it because textures eat memory. So what I did was I built a PCG basically to apply detail to anything that I wanted it to apply detail to. So if I just drag in my PCG volume and go to... There we go, you can see it a bit better. So. Let's say I just want the top of this affected. So I'm just going to briefly clean up my PCG link and just move this to a position I want it at. Okay, and now move this down just until it's enveloping the top of the piece that I want. Now bear in mind I could have multiple amounts of these rocks, so that's not a problem. There we go. And I can also exclude anything that I don't want this to, you know, go over, um, that's an option inside of PCG, but for the minute, I'm just going to take it to about here, just so it covers the lot, and if I hit generate, as you can see, my PCG is quite happy to generate, you know, I've got ferns, I've got climbing ivy, all giving it a little bit of difference. Now, what I can also do, let's open up my cliff foliage here, here we are, so it's not complicated. I've got a world ray hit query leading to a surface sampler, leading to two normal to densities, different density for the ivy. And I've got a selection of five ivies here, I think. And I've got a selection of four different things for the um, ferns. So grass and ferns. Now I've got a transform here, just giving it some minor bend and rotation. I've got a density filter and a self pruning, and then two static mesh spawners. Now, let's imagine and this isn't a, you know, an unlikely scenario. If I go to my surface sampler here, let's imagine I want to change my points per square meter to something higher, like 12 or 24. You know, just to really crowd in a lot of things here. Now, this may not make too much of a difference at first, but once you've got this all over the place, then, you know, things are going to grind to a halt, depending on your specifications. Even a points per square meter of 5 can sometimes grind things really down. And you'll be left there going, well, what the hell did I do wrong? I'm using PCG. I don't understand. Okay, well, there's a simple fix for that. Let's go over here to our static mesh spawners. Okay, and what we need to do is, you see here where it says Instance Data Packer. What I want you to do is click on it and come down to Instance Data Packer by Attribute. And what it's going to do now is it's going to convert all of these into instance meshes. And by doing so, this means that it's not going to be updating all the time in real time which doesn't matter so much if you've got like, you know, static meshes that you're decorating like I do. Um, you can regenerate your targets any time you want. So if I just grab my PCG here, and I'll just bring in my details panel just so you can see. There we go. So if I go clean up and then generate, I can regenerate it as much as I want. Okay, but I can't really do it in, you know, real time now because I've got this set as instant stuff. Now, if I come in to my project and just press play, bear in mind I'm recording as well, I'm getting a pretty decent frame rate. Okay, and you can see here all my meshes are just clinging to the rocks that they're supposed to. Obviously, if I, you know, increase this way more, um, so again, if I went to my surface sampler and increased my points per square meter to maybe 50 or something insane like that, um, let's save and come out. For it to make a difference, I'm now going to have to click on here and regenerate. So clean up, generate. There we go. Now it's much thicker. And because we're using this PCG instance data pack, so it's packing its data as instances, it's not going to be particularly heavy. Now another thing that we can do though to reduce the load even more, we don't need to generate this PCG at all. We can just click on the PCG cliff foliage here. And if I just drag this out so you can see, click PCG link. And now if I want to, I can just delete the original PCG cliff foliage 
because this is a giant PCG packed actor, just one. And again, good thing about that is, you know, much reduced amount of processing in my system. So it means I can start dressing up large areas of my map, making it look good, and it's not going to drag my FPS down really low. Now, I tested this the other day because um, I was curious. I had um, an island about four kilometers by two kilometers or three kilometers with several of these on it. And the FPS initially in build was running at seven FPS on a 30, I use a 3070, 47, no, 3070. Um, I moved it to using this kind of packing and immediately it's a 90 FPS. So that's the kind of overhead difference you're looking at here for optimization. So for just a couple of tick boxes, basically you can get all your stuff done. And it doesn't matter what it is, as long as you're using a lot of replicated geometry. So for example, just drag this in to show you. Here's a simple cliffwood walkway. And this one is using a lot of PCGs. Let's try and find where the handle's gone. There it is. There we go. So if I, it, if I can find the handle and grab it and move it around, then this thing here is going to basically, you know, make as many copies as I want without, well, you know, without overloading my system. So definitely worth doing. Okay, so with that said, whoops, I deleted the wrong bit. With that said, go off and have fun with your PCGs, and I will see you later.